What's going on guys, Clint here. And in this video, we're gonna be building a simple React.js application. If you're new to React, if you're just learning React, then this is gonna be perfect for you. It's gonna be using some simple React.js features such as the use state hook and also some reasonable, com reasonable components. And we're gonna be passing down some properties. So this is what we're gonna be building right here. Basically it's like a model after the Turo website. We have a nice nav bar at the top, little hero section. Well, check out this form, it's pretty cool. You can have a from date and until date. And then down here, we have a slider.js component is an NPM package. I'm gonna show you how to install and configure inside of your React.js application. And basically it's just a simple slider, but it looks really, really awesome, you guys. And I'm also gonna show you how to make this mobile responsive. So when we shrink down, you'll see it, right now it's going from five slides and it shrinks down to four, then even down less as we get on smaller devices. And also I wanna show you our aware form here um, also compresses as well. So everything is, mobile responsive have a nice little section down here you guys so if you want to see how i built this from scratch in react js and we're styling everything with css modules and i'm gonna explain what those are and what the benefits are of using those so ready to get started let's jump in all right you guys here we are inside vs code i'm gonna go ahead and press the control back tick button open up our terminal here and i'm gonna be using yarn if you need to use npm that's fine too i'm gonna say yarn create and i'm gonna say react dash app it's gonna put, put a dot there. It's gonna install that into our current directory. All right, it looks like we're just about done here. Happy hacking, that means we're ready to go. All right, so let's go ahead and start up our development server here. First things first, so go ahead and type yarn start, npm start for using npm. So it's just asking me if I wanna start on 3001 instead of 3000 since we already have this one running over here. So once you get started up, this should be what you see as just a simple create React app. So what we wanna do is actually go ahead and clean up some files, some, some files that we're not gonna be using. And by the way, you guys, we're just gonna be working inside of this source folder. So don't worry about the public. I definitely don't go into the node modules or anything like that. So this app.css, I'm gonna go ahead and select that. The app.test, the uh, logo at .svg, report web vitals and the setup test. Let's just go ahead delete all of those okay so we're gonna get some errors but that's cool don't worry about that so basically it's looking for things that we've imported in art there so let's go into our index.js file we're going to delete that code right there then also this report web vitals we're going to get rid of that as well so inside of our app.js and i just pressed the, the command uh, b button there so i'm on a mac so if you're wondering that's how we toggle that side menu so We'll get rid of all of this code in here, get rid of that class name there, because we're gonna be using CSS modules. And then here, we'll just type import React from React, just like that at the top. So that should clear up all of our errors there. As you can see, now we have a blank uh, screen. So how are we gonna set up our application, right? So inside of our source folder, we're gonna have a components folder, okay? So let's go ahead and create that, so components. And inside here, we're gonna have subfolders of all of our components and their style sheets. So that's important of how we're gonna lay out this application. Then also inside of this source folder, I'm gonna have another folder called images. And I'm gonna go ahead and just pull over the images that I'm gonna be using. So it's just three of them. Uh, I'm gonna put a link to this in the description below. So if you wanna clone this, it's gonna be a link to my GitHub so you can grab these images. If we're gonna use your own, that's fine too. But I'm gonna put a link to my GitHub so you can actually just grab these exact images here. And these are, these are the images that drive image there, a logo dark, we're gonna be putting this in the footer, and then this logo here for, for our nav bar, okay? So once we have our images pulled in, that's great. Inside of our components folder, I'm gonna create a subfolder called nav bar. And inside, inside the uh, nav bar folder here is where I'm gonna have a nav bar .jsx. That's gonna be our nav bar component. And by the way, you can use .jsx or JS, doesn't really matter. And then we're also going to have our CSS modules files, right? So I'm gonna say navbar.module.css, just like that. So you have the component name, or that's how I'd like to name it, dot module, then dot CSS. And that's how we use CSS modules. Now I'm gonna show you how we import that. It's, it's just plain CSS. Sorry, you guys are doing some yard work out there. But it's just plain CSS, but I'm gonna show you the benefits. Basically, when you use CSS modules, it, it, it limits the scope to just that component and it's not uh, site-wide. So I'm gonna show you exactly what I mean when we start actually writing some CSS. So I'm gonna go ahead and say RAFCE. Um, that's just a an extension, the React Redux ES7 extension to um, quickly create some components, class base or function, uh, functional components. So that's what we're doing there, RAFCE. Um, so what we wanna do first, okay? So let's go ahead and import our style sheet, even though we don't have anything in there. So I'm gonna say import, now I'm just gonna say styles. You can say whatever you want. I'm gonna say styles, 
from and then we're going into our nav bar dot module whoa dot module dot css just like that and that's all we need to do to import our style sheet now for our nav bar we're going to be using um a react package called react icon excuse me so let's just go ahead and install that put open up a little side terminal here and i'm just going to say yarn add react dash icons can you see that so yarn add react dash icons or npm i um react icons if you want to use that so you see my videos you know i like this package i use it all the time it's super easy to use and there's tons of icons you can use for free so this is it right there so let's go ahead and i'm going to go ahead and import some of the icons that we're going to be using today so what we're going to be using is see let's go ahead and import we're going to be using ai outline menu we're going to be using ai outline close ai outline search i believe it is yes and then also ai outline menu and then we need to import these from react go and wrap my lines here from react dash icons then very important you guys you can import these all in the same line if they have that same pretext because you have to add in the subfolder here well ai so now we have access to all these all these icons and then let's go ahead and import the image that we're going to use for our uh, for our logo and so i'm going to go ahead and say import logo so i'm going to call it you can call it whatever you like and then i'm going to say from and then we have to basically go and look for that file so since we're in a subfolder we have to go outside to current folders and then we're going to go into the images and then this is just called logo.png okay so inside of here right so inside here in our jsx what we're going to write here i'm going to go ahead and just change that to a header here and then let's go ahead and give this a class name so i'm going to say class name and then what i'm going to say here styles dot navbar okay so now inside of our css file our navbar this is just going to be our oh, if I can type navbar and then we're going to put all our styles in here okay so that's how we're going to access the css for our css modules so next what we want to do let's go ahead and have our image here so i'm going to say image and this is going to be our logo which we named right there okay i'm just going to put a little slash in there so let's go ahead and need to import this so i'll say nav bar just like that sometimes you can auto import this if you press control and space bar it says no suggestions of course that's fine so let's just go and import this manually so import and if we look for it we need to go see here we're importing nav bar um and then we have to go find here it's going to be inside i believe we're going in two here so we're going to look for um or sorry just one there so nav bar and we're going to the components and then we're going into the nav bar folder and we're looking for just nav bar just like that so oh didn't import looks like we're uh let's go in here Menu, menu, close. Oh, this is right here. What are we looking for? Menu, close, and person. So it's saying that I imported twice. So that's what we need there. So AI outline menu, AI outline close, AI outline search, then AI outline person. Okay. So now that we have our, I'm going to go and close our app.js. We can close the index.js as well, you guys. So now that we're inside of our our nav bar we have our logo that we imported okay perfect now next what we want to have is our our like our um unordered list here on the side there and then we're going to add in our icons so what we're going to have here i'm going to put this in a nav tag just like that then we're going to have an unordered list and inside our unordered list let's go ahead and give this a class name and inside here i'm going to say styles dot menu just like that then for our inside here we're going to have an unordered list and then a link here and i'm just going to put a slash these act aren't actually going to go anywhere but we're going to have one that says learn we'll say learn more then i'm just going to highlight this and i'm going to press the shift option button so i can just copy it down just like that perfect and this one's going to say log in and then down here we can say we'll say this one's going to be signed up just like that perfect so next i want to add in our actual icons in there right and let's put it over here so we can see what we're doing um, so in here we'll have li and we'll have this one i want to be ai outline search just like that we should see it show up in there perfect and then let's just copy or we'll just type this in here so another list item and this one's going to be ai 
outline a person just like that just to kind of simulate like it would be like an account or something like that so um do, let's see did i not ai outline Uh, let's see here, did I, AI outline, okay, sorry, uh, again here, it's AI outline user, okay, sorry, AI outline user, not person, sorry about that, you guys, okay, so let's just go ahead and switch it over, okay, so there we go, now you can see we have our user in there, and uh, you know what, you guys, real quick, let's go ahead and add in some, like, global styles, I'm gonna get rid of this, um, get rid of all the margins and padding, and also these, like, list style type and stuff like that, so, even though we're gonna be using CSS modules, the this, the global styles we can actually add into the index.css file, okay? So let's go ahead and delete all of that. And what I wanna put in here, I'm gonna apply this to all, I'm just gonna say box sizing, we wanna set this to border box. And then margin, I just wanna set that to zero. Padding, let's set that to zero. And then on the unordered list, we'll, we'll set this to list style type. I just wanna set this to none. Okay, perfect, that's looking better. Then on our links, I'm gonna go give this a color. It's gonna be like kind of like a, a black, dark, dark gray color. And then um, also let's say, uh, we'll say uh, text decoration. We want this to be none and that's gonna get rid of that outline there, cool. So, and then to the body, let's go ahead and I'm gonna say font size, I wanna say 1.2 rem. Kind of beef it up a little bit and then we'll say font um let's do line height so i'm gonna say line height i'm gonna set this to 1.3 and then i'm gonna change the font family and i'm just gonna use a little react font here they're one that react has available which is poppins um, and it's always a good idea you guys to add a secondary font just in case the browser for whatever reason doesn't support that so um just so there's no issues down the road so we can go ahead and close the index.cs so just some basic global styles um I probably could add in some button styles in here, but you know, it's, that's fine. We're, it's a pretty small application here, so. All right, so inside here, that looks like uh, looking pretty good so far. Um, I do wanna add in our mobile button here. So I'm gonna create another div down, whoops. I'm gonna create another div down here. And inside here, I'm gonna say AI outline menu, okay? And um, are you serious? Hey, I'm always. Oh my God. <laughs> sorry, AI out. Okay, this needs to be lowercase. Okay, so sorry, we're gonna get through this, you guys. Sorry. Okay, so AI outline menu, and then let's go ahead and give this a size. So we can actually give the size property inside of, and this is just a property um, related to the React icon package. So I'm gonna say I think 25 should be good. You can see it kind of bumps it up a little bit, just like that. So yeah, 25 should be good here. So let's go ahead and I'm gonna give this div right here. This is our mobile button div here. So I'm gonna give this a class name and it's gonna be styles, right? So styles, and just to be clear, you guys, styles is because what we're importing it as. So we say styles and then we have access to the actual class names inside of our um, navbar.module.css. Okay, so I'm gonna say um, mobile BTN, okay? Okay, so let's jump into and do some styling in here, okay? So for our nav bar, um, pretty basic. We want this, to, let's have the width here. We'll say width um, 100%. I want to say the height is gonna be 70 pixels. Now we want to display this as flex, okay? And then we'll justify content space between, and we're gonna say uh, align items to the center. It's gonna just kind of center everything a little bit. And, um, we're gonna hide that button or that that menu, this um, drop down menu there. So let's go ahead and I'm gonna say um, mobile ETNs, what we called it, and we'll just hit display. Um, sorry, not display flex, display none. Just to go ahead and hide that for now. Okay, so perfect. That's what we want right there, you guys. Um, let's give a padding here so nothing's uh, flush against the edges here. So one rim that looks good. Now next, um, this uh, our our menu class here. Let's go ahead and. We'll say menu and let's display this as flex, okay? And then, oh, that looks good. And we'll say align items to the center and you'll notice that bumps it down a bit. So um, that's looking good here. And next we'll like target our menu li and we'll say, let's give this a, um, we're gonna give this padding, okay? Padding one rim. Uh, there we go, looks good, looks good. And then next, um, let's go ahead and for our, or say, let's see here. I'm gonna say navbar 
Hey, it doesn't really matter, I guess, but I want to say um, font size. I'm just going to shrink it down a little bit to 0.8 rim just to drop it down. I think that looks good there. So for these icons in here, let's go ahead and I don't have actual in um, actual uh, class names attached to them. What I'm going to do is just add in some just basic inline styling because it's just one style here. So what I did is held down the option button. And what that allows me to do is actually type in multiple places at one time just to save a little time. So for inline style, I'm just going to say style, then two curly brackets. Since we're adding inline styles in React.js, we have to have two curly brackets. And then we also have to have, um, uh, we have to type in camel case. So I'm going to say margin top, and I'm just going to drop them drop them down a little bit. So six pixels, just like that. It's going to drop it down just a tad. And then um, let's go ahead and add, I'm going to add a size property here as well. So I'm going to just say size, and um, I think uh, 25 would, would probably be fine. So. All right, so everything is looking good there, you guys. Uh, excuse me, now, um, what do I wanna do next? Let's actually make this thing uh, mobile responsive. So if we look at this, if we go to inspect and look at our Chrome developer tools, we want this to, to toggle to a drop down menu, or actually rather we're gonna do a side drawer menu, one that slides in from the side. So you can do it however you like though. So, but let's go ahead and, so inside of our module.css, let's go down here and actually add in our media queries, and I'm gonna set this, the breakpoint to be at 720 pixels. So I'm gonna say at media screen, and we'll say max width 720 pixels, just like that, perfect. Now inside here, let's go ahead and target our mobile button first, and what we want this to display, we're gonna display it as block, okay? And then what we wanna position, not relative, absolute, and we'll say, just say top, uh, one RAM, just like that. And let's give it a, a, a cursor, a pointer, and then also, um, I think that'll be good for now. So let's see, oh, it's over there, top one RAM. Let's just change that to right, it should be good. So there it is, you kind of see it's behind our, our menu there. So let's go ahead and take care of our menu right now. So for this, what we're gonna tar target is the menu. So right now, if we're under 720 pixels, we want these, uh, this style to apply. And what I want to do here is actually, we're gonna display this as, um, as flex, and we're gonna flex direction column there, okay? And the way we want to do this, we wanna position it as fixed. We wanna take it the full width, sorry, the full width and full height of the screen. So let's position this as fixed, just like that. And I'm gonna say um, left zero, uh, right zero, bottom zero, and then um, top zero, just like that. So that's gonna look good there. Now for the width, I'm gonna say width 100, whoa. Width is gonna be 100%. And height is gonna be 100 viewport height there. Now our, um, I wanna actually add also up here with our flex direction, I wanna say um, justify content to center there, okay? Perfect, that's what we want there. Now, um, I'm gonna go ahead and give this a background color as well. And I'm just gonna give it kind of like an off-white color. Um, yeah, there we go. And let's give this a, um, let's go ahead and give this a Z index as well. We'll say 10. And we're gonna give it a transition. So when it slides over, it's kind of slides over nice and nice and neat there. So I'm gonna say um, left and then just one second, just like that. So everything is looking good. And let's give this a Z index, you guys. So that way we can see our button up. Perfect, perfect. Everything's looking nice. Now, um, what I want to do, let's add, say, uh, FRA, and I'm just gonna say font size uh, two RAM there. Just gonna bump those up a little bit. I think it looks good there, perfect. Now, um, for our active class, so right now, um, take that away. Right now, this is how our menu is gonna look whenever we toggle our uh, mobile menu. However, um, we only want this to toggle whenever whenever it's active, right? So I actually wanna hide this off the screen. So instead of left zero, I'm gonna say left negative 100%. What that's gonna do is just slide it off the screen. Then here, we're gonna have an active class, just like that. We're gonna have an active class, and inside here, whenever it's active, we're gonna say left zero. So um, that's all we need to do there, and that's it's gonna look good. So let's let's go into our navbar.js file, and inside here, we're gonna add in some logic. We're gonna use the use state hook and actually make this thing uh, responsive and actually uh, show up and look good. So let's go ahead and add the use state hook at the top. So we're gonna put that in after React in some curly brackets. We're gonna say use state. 
And our state, all of our JavaScript is gonna go right in here, just below our navbar component, but above the return. So what we're gonna say in here, I'm gonna say const, open up our brackets. I'm gonna say nav and set nav. You can say whatever you like, but typically this is a value right here, the nav. And then the second one that the usState hook takes in is actually a function, right? So and then we'll just say usState, and it's gonna be equal to false by default. So down here on our mobile button div, okay, whenever we click our mobile button, I wanna have an on-click event so it actually toggles our state between true and false. So I'm gonna say on-click, and then in here, what I'm gonna have is just a simple arrow function that's gonna go ahead and set nav. It's gonna trigger that function. We see logical not operator, and we'll just say not nav. So basically, whenever we click this, it's gonna to toggle our state back and forth. So, but when whenever our, right now our state's false, Whenever it's true, we actually want our menu to slide over and we want to change this icon to the AI outline close. So let's go ahead and say AI outline close, just like that. I'm gonna give it the same size, uh, 25, just like that. So, so when this appears, basically we don't want, the, want the, both of those to appear at the same time, but whenever we click it, we want to toggle back and forth. And the way we're gonna do that is with a ternary operator here, right? Basically it's a simple way to write a simple like if statement. So. This down here is actually JavaScript, you guys. I know it looks like HTML, but it's actually, uh, or sorry, it's JSX. So what we can do is actually open up some curly brackets here, and this allows us to just write JavaScript down in here. So what I'm gonna say is nav, right? Because that's our value, it's our state. And if nav is true, we wanna execute uh, something else, it's gonna, it's gonna execute something else. So for it, if it's true, we wanna actually just move that and put it right in there. Oh, left out my little, it there so if nav is true we want to show the ai outline close else if it's false which is false by default i'm going to save that it, it it just shows the menu so now if we click this you can see it toggles back and forth so what we need to do next is actually add in the uh, the actual styles to make this thing responsive so what we're going to do we're going to do that right here on our on our list so what we're going to do and we're actually doing the same thing as that ternary operator so let's just go ahead and cl uh, cut that out right there. What we're gonna say, if nav is true, right? So if nav is true, we're gonna add in some brackets here. And what we're gonna have is the styles.menu, oops, styles.menu, then also the styles.active, okay? And then we just wanna join these. So we're gonna say the dot join method right there, and we'll add a little string there. So make sure you add a space in there, super important, important sorry. Else, we're just gonna use the styles.menu. So go ahead and give that a quick save, and that should be our menu right there. So notice everything is sliding over, so perfect, you guys. Now let's move on to our uh, hero section right there, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and close that off. Everything's looking good. So inside here, like I said, how we're laying out our file, we're now gonna create another folder inside of our components folder. And this one, I'm just gonna call hero, okay? So notice this is just a lot easier. It's a lot cleaner, it's a lot nicer, and just easier to understand. So in here, we're gonna have our hero.jsx, just like that. And then also let's have our hero.module.css, okay? Now our AFCE is gonna get our functional component. Now in here, we're gonna want to do is, a, let's go ahead and import our style sheet. So we'll do that by import styles. From, and we're looking at the hero.module.css. Perfect, okay. Close that side menu down. Now next, what we're gonna have here, so we're gonna have this full full width uh, div here. And basically this background is an image I'm gonna be bringing, bringing over from Unsplash. And we're gonna do that all with CSS. So let's go ahead and, and, and code this out here. So for our div here, get rid of that. I'm gonna go ahead and give this a class name, okay? So I'm gonna give it a class name, and it's gonna be styles.hero, okay? And this is where, like I said, this is where our image is, we're gonna um, import that with CSS only, okay? And then in here, we're gonna have a form, and it's not gonna submit anywhere, so we can just delete the action. Now we're gonna have uh, three divs in here, I believe, yeah, sorry, four divs with, um, around each section. So for our text section, this is our date section, and also our date section here. And then we're gonna have our um, AI outline search, which we can go ahead and import right now. So import, and this just React icon, AI outline search, just like that. And this is gonna be imported from React icons slash AI, perfect. 
Now let's go ahead and um, create our divs in here. Okay, so I'm gonna have this div here. This one, so this one's gonna be called, give it a class name. And this one's gonna be called styles. Let's say this one text, okay? Now the next one, let's go ahead and just copy these down. Like I said, we're gonna have four, so it's gonna be two, three, and four. So this next one, I'm gonna say um, from, okay? And this one's gonna be the until, cause these are, it's gonna be our dates. And this one's gonna be our icon, but um, I'm gonna say search BTN just like that. Okay, perfect. So inside here, let's have a label and we don't need any of the HTML4. So it's not actually gonna submit anywhere. So for our label, uh, I'm just gonna say where, just like that. Now this input, it's gonna be a type of text, wherever that is. So I'm gonna say type text just like that. And let's just go ahead and clean this up a bit since we're not needing anything like that. And I'm gonna say, give it a placeholder. Placeholder can just be um, search location, just like that, perfect. Now inside of these, um, inside of here, we're gonna have an extra uh, span in here. And it's gonna be our, um, it's just gonna be the uh, border on the side. So let's go ahead and do that next. And I'm gonna say span. And inside here, I'm gonna give this a class name. And for this, we're gonna say styles.border, just like that. And then we're gonna have our label. And we'll give this. This is gonna be, it's gonna say from. And we'll say input. And this is gonna be of date. There we go. Let's get rid of there. Perfect. Now let's just go ahead and copy that. We'll paste that in here. And this is going to be from, we'll change that to until. Perfect. And then for the search button, um, we're gonna have, let's see, a div here. We'll say a button, say a button that says search. Let's leave this out for now, because I'm gonna show you, this is gonna be our media query, okay? So let's go ahead and leave that out for now. Let's look at what we're doing. So let's go ahead and wanna import this. So let's say, your row, just like that. Of course, it's not going to auto import, so it's fine. We'll just copy that down, and this is going to say hero. This is in the hero folder, and we'll say hero, just like that. Okay. Hey, there you go. Okay. So, hey, let's go ahead and add in uh, our styling here. So, it is, let's go, ahead, let's put this in the hero. Then, so what we're going to have is a background. Okay. And then here we're going to say URL. Like I said, we're adding this with uh, CSS. So, put some quotes in there. I'm going to paste this in. And let's see, so you can actually see our image back there, see the background. And what we're gonna say is, say no repeat, just like that. And then we'll say center, and then also we want it to cover. And this part is very important if you want the, uh, to maintain its aspect ratio, no matter what screen size you're on. So in here next, we want to just display this as flex, and then we'll have a, um, say width, 100%, and we want the height to be, I'm gonna set this height to be 500 pixels. So now you'll see our image show up. So um, just to show you guys, I got this from Unsplash. So it's just Unsplash or Pexels, two different uh, photo sharing websites I use. So um, basically you just click a picture, right click, and you just do the copy image address. And that's the string that I pasted in here. So that's how that's how you're, uh, I, I found that. So, um, and the others, for all the other images that we're gonna use, basically we're just pulling it over as links. So everything is looking good here. So next, after the hero, um, let's go ahead and target our form, okay? So for our form, what we're gonna have here, we're gonna display this as a flex here, and we'll say justify content space between. Then we want to have the aligned items to the center. I want a, a width of 700 pixels, okay? And then I'll say margin auto, then I'm gonna say margin top, uh, just 10%, so you kind of see it just bumps it up a little bit. So that's how we want it there. Perfect. And then also we want to have the padding, uh, whoa, padding. Okay, there we go. Um, pit Witting, sorry, I want this width to be 100, 100% right there, and the max width to be 700 pixels. So max width, 700 pixels. That looks good there, perfect. Line item, center, center. Now we want to have the padding in here of six pixels and 15 pixels, so there you go. And now what we're gonna do is add the border. Um, I know you can't see this, so let's just do this first. We'll add a, um, I'm gonna add a background color, okay? And this is gonna be RGBA. And I'm just gonna say 247, 247, 247. And then for the alpha here, it's just be 0.9, so you can actually see through it there, so. 
looking good there. Now next, I'm just gonna copy over my box shadow here. Um, just so I don't have to type it out. I'm gonna paste that in there. But you can see you're gonna have a nice shadow pop up around the form. So that looks good. And then let's just give this thing a box, um, or sorry, a say border radius of 25 pixels. There you go. Okay, looks good there. Perfect. Now let's just open this up here. So all right, yeah, that looks much better. I like that right there. So perfect. So a few more things we need to do. Um, next, I want to target target these uh, labels there. So let's go ahead and do that there. So I'm going to say form label. And what we want to do, we would actually want to display this. Um, or sorry, I'm going to shrink down the text a little bit. And then also add a little padding there. So I'm going to say uh, font size. I'm just going to say 0.8 rim. And then padding on the bottom. Just two pixels. Just very small there, so boom, there it goes. Everything's looking better there. So next, what we wanna grab is actually the text, which is this here, and the from and the until. So I'm gonna say text, I'm gonna add commas there. So we're gonna grab each, um, each of them, from and until, just like that. Now in here, we wanna just, these to display as flex with a flex direction of columns, so they're stacked up nicely. There we go, that's looking good. And we forgot our magnifying glass there for our search. So let's go ahead and we already imported there. Make or if not, make sure you import it at the top. And then we're just gonna put that in here. So paste that in just like that. Perfect. And real quick, you guys, I'm gonna go ahead and uncomment this. So search for cars. I'm gonna add that in there. But for this button, let's go in this search button. Let's go ahead and I'm gonna say search BTN and just the button itself. Mm, yeah, the button itself, let's just display none. Then we're gonna come back and add some media queries and I'll show you what we're gonna do with that here in just a moment. So everything is looking nice there. So for our actual, um, for our input, so right now these are kind of ugly. So we're gonna come back and change these. Um, I want these to be transparent. I wanna be able to see through them. So I think it's things that looks, I think it looks a lot nicer. So let's do that right now. So for that, we're gonna have form input just like that. And say background color transparent just like that. And we want the border, the border to be set to none. And let's go ahead and add in a font family. So let's just add it just like there. We'll say sans serif. Perfect. That looks good. So we want this to take up a little more space. So let's take care of that. Um, so we can add that. We'll go right here. So for our form, and I think we need to add in say input text. I don't know if I added this. So let's go ahead and go over here or input. Yeah, so right here on our text input, let's just give it a class name. And I'll say styles.text input, just like that, perfect. Now for this, we wanna say, give this a width of 300 pixels, just like that. And I'm gonna bump up the font size just a little bit to one rim, there we go. And what we want to next do is whenever we select these, I want it to, um, it kind of looks funky like that. So what we want to do is, uh, I don't like the outline. So let's go ahead and set that next. So we'll say form input, and then we'll have on, um, on focus, we want the outline set to none. And that looks a lot better. We can actually type in here and it doesn't, it doesn't give that ugly outline there that Chrome does. So that's looking good so far. A few more things we need to do. Okay. So next, what I want to do is let's grab this um, search button here. So not the actual button, but the search BTN here. So I'll say search and just like that. And what we're going to say is display flex and then align items to the center there. And it'll drop it down just a little bit. Like that. So. Perfect, that's looking good. Now for um, input text, so let's see. We probably wanna slide this over a bit before we get to our media queries. Um, I'm not really liking that. So also I wanna add in a um, add in a border here on the from and until. So let's do that with, we'll do that right here. So on our from and also the until. I'm gonna say border left, and I'm gonna say one pixel solid type solid, and then we'll just say it's like that. Hey, there we go. And let's give it some padding. Padding left, and we'll say six pixels. Perfect. 
Now, it doesn't look like this is actually displaying on my 300 pixel. So input text. Okay, okay. All right, text input. Okay, so let's just do that. Text input. <clears throat> Now, okay, perfect. So that looks a lot better, you guys. Now, for one thing, when we notice, okay, whenever we put this on mobile devices, or make mobile responsive, I actually want the layout of the form to change. So, and that's why we added in that button. And notice we're using the button whenever um, on mobile devices and not using this uh, icon. So let's go ahead and tackle that right now. We'll do our, um, we'll go ahead and add in our media queries. So, we have our button there. And what I want to do is let's just give this button a class name. Um, I'm going to give it a class name. So let's just give it a class name. Styles.btn, just like that. Perfect. Now um, let's go into our, our CSS here. And I'm going to make this breakpoint at 720 pixels, which I think looks good. And you can have multiple breakpoints if you want, doesn't really matter. So I'm gonna say at media, whoop, at media screen, and we'll say max, max width of 720 pixels. Now in here, what we're gonna target first is actually the form, all right? Because we're gonna change the layout of our, of our form, so it's like flex. And then we're gonna change this to flex direction flex direction of column. Now let's change, let's see, run this here. So let's change to like a, a device. There we go, perfect. So just to see if we comment that out, so it looks okay, but it's all jacked up because it's not fitting in our screen. So next we wanna say, there we go. I wanna have a max, max width of 100%. And for the margin, I'm gonna say auto and then one rim. So it just gives it a little bit of sizing there, perfect. So next, what we want to target is actually our, our text and our from and the until, just like that. And for these, we want to say, give this a width of 100%. And we're going to give a padding of point to rem. Perfect. Okay, everything's spreading across. So that's already looking better there. Okay, perfect. Now, next, what I want to grab is this uh, this border left here. I don't actually want that border to show. And this is where the span is going to come in that we added earlier. So for the from and also the until, say, border left is what we said. So border left, I'm just going to change that back to none. There we go. Perfect. Now, uh, for our text input, so I'm going to say text input. I'm going to say... For the font size, I'm going to change that to 0.8 RAM just to shrink it back down just a tad. Or we already set that. I'll be fine there. So next, what we want to do is um, font size. So let's see. We want to change this. Let's add in our little I'm gonna zoom in just a bit. Now. I'm going to add in our um, there we go. Let's add in our, our borders there. So. And that's going to be on our span, right? And we gave our, our spans a class name of border. So we can just select it like so. And I'm going to say border top, one pixel solid. And let's give that color there, the kind of black there. And then we'll say padding. There we go. That's looking good there. Perfect. Now, um, next, let's give this label as well. So we'll say form label. And for that, we're going to say padding. 0.4 rim on the top and bottom, just to spread it out just a bit, perfect. Now we're gonna be targeting our button down there because we want this to be a nice um, button there instead of this little magnifying glass. So inside our um, CSS here, let's see our button. So let's grab our search button first of all. So we'll say search begin, just like that. We'll say width of 100%, okay. And we have we're not displaying our button right now, so let's just go ahead and say for say btn like that display block. I think up here I just said button. Yeah, let's just change this to btn. So now we're displaying as block. Okay, and we'll come finish that out in a minute. So 100% there, and we want the uh, border up, and that's going to be the same one pixel solid. Yeah, and we'll give this some padding as well. Padding eight pixels, top and bottom, zero on the left and right. 
padding in there, perfect. So for our actual button, so we're gonna display this as block for the color. I'm gonna go ahead and copy that over there. So for our background, background color here, it's gonna be this kind of purple color there. Ooh, and we're still displaying. Let's see how this display. There it is. Okay. So next, let's just get rid of this icon right there. So uh, I don't think, let's see if we gave this a class name. Let's give this icon a class name. So it's, oh, no callback. Class name. It will just say styles. Just like that. Okay. Then in here, we'll just say icon and we'll display. Wait, not. Okay. Perfect. All right. So let's go ahead and style this button here. So. For our button can have less styles here, so we're gonna have the color of the text actually be white. And we'll say width 100%. Excuse me, I want the font weight to be 600, okay? Font size, I'm gonna say one rim. Um, border, I don't want any border on there, so I'm gonna say none. And then for the padding, I want 12 pixels. And then margin, we're gonna say 0.5 rim on the top and bottom, so you're on the left and right. Then of course, uh, course cursor have pointer there so everything's looking good okay now let's see here i'm gonna shrink this down and make sure everything changes over boom perfect all right so let's add a little uh, hover effect there real quick so for our hover i'm gonna go ahead and select this new color here and for that let's add it in right here so we'll say sir uh we'll search btn um btn hover and then we'll just give this a background color just like that. And we'll set the transition, transition background color second. So let's see how that looks. So we hover over this, you see a nice slow change there. Perfect. All right. So um, everything is responsive. Everything is looking great. Perfect. All right, you guys. So let's move on to, let's move on to the next step here, which is going to be, um, which is gonna be this slider right here. So let's move on to that next. All right, you guys, so this next section is gonna be really, really awesome because we're using this slider NPM package that we're gonna be importing. And also, like I said, we're gonna make it mobile responsive. And we're also gonna be using uh, reusable, reusable components and passing down some properties. So let's go ahead and get started by creating another folder in here inside of our components folder. And I'm just gonna call this find. It's gonna be the name of our component here. So inside of the find, Folder. I'm gonna say find.jsx. Then we're also gonna have a find.module.css. And then also while we're in here, I'm gonna have a reusable component and I'm just gonna call it card.jsx, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and generate our functional component for the card and then also in here. And let's go ahead and import, we're gonna import styles from our uh, find.module.css. Okay, perfect. Now, what we should probably do first is go ahead and also let's copy this and also just um, let's copy this line right here and also just import it inside of our card um, component as well. So what I want you to do is go to swiper.js, or uh, sorry, swiperjs.com slash react. And this is the um, this is the component that we're going to be installing. So it's really easy to use and it looks it looks amazing. So really kind of level up your game here. So I'm just gonna go ahead and install this uh, NPM I swiper. In this case, I'm using yarn. So I'm just gonna type yarn add um, swiper just like that. So it already has some, some kind of examples for us to do. Um, I'm just gonna kind of go off of my own notes here. So in our, um, in our folder here, I'm just gonna go ahead and import a few things, okay? So first, you can actually probably copy a couple of these over. Let's go ahead and import some of these. So what we're gonna wanna import is this, um, see, I don't even know if we need these here, but we are gonna need the swiper and the swiper slide. So the navigation and the pagination depends if you wanna use it or not. Um, I am gonna be using the navigation, the pagination I was kind of playing around with along with the scroll bar. So, but go ahead and import all those and you can kind of play with them and see if you wanna use them as in, in your own uh, project. So that's what we need to do first. Now, next we actually need to import the, um, 
we'll swiper slash CSS just like that. And we're also going to import um, the swiper slash CSS slash navigation. And um, like I said, if you want to use the pagination, everything else, that's fine too. But we need these are the ones that we're going to need in here. So let's go ahead and inside of our app, let's go ahead and add this in there. So this is going to be the find component, just like that. And copy this down because it doesn't want to automatically import. So find this is the find folder. And just like that. Perfect. Let's copy that. So let's refresh. And there we go. Here's our find component. Now, um, let's go ahead and code this out and then we'll come back to the swiper component. So inside here, I'm going to give this a class name. Okay. Class name. And this is going to be uh, styles dot find. Okay. And then we're going to have another div here. And this is going to be the heading. So I'll give this a class name of styles dot heading. And in here we'll have an H one that says find your drive. Just like that should show up in there. Perfect. And then we're going to have a P tag and a span in here. So it says explore the world's largest car sharing. So there we go. Perfect. And then up underneath, go ahead and give this a save. So it gets nice and formatted. Um, let's have this, let's wrap this in a div here. And in here, we're going to have wrap this this p tag in the span because we're going to add in this nice little color here shift that upwards we're going to add in this nice little color offset uh, background color which is pretty cool so let's give this a class name here we'll say styles dot text g just like that perfect and then just below here um just below this one right here we're going to have a or sorry below our heading we're going to have a, another div and this is going to be our Last name, this is going to be the styles dot say swiper container. So, and inside here is where our, um, I'll say slider container actually. This is where our, um, where our swiper component is gonna be. So we'll come back to that in a minute. Let's go ahead and get this set up here. So let's go into our CSS and let's go ahead and start styling off just this top part here. And then we'll come back for everything else. So, gonna have the find and what we're gonna say is max width we're gonna start putting things in a container and i'm gonna say 1240 pixels margin auto and kind of shift everything in the middle no we're on a uh, we're on a, there you go so since we're shrunk down you can't really see it right there if you want to use a this is a pretty cool tool called pesticide i use that a lot uh, basically it outlines all of your elements on the page so it's a huge bonus if you're uh, you know, as a web developer so pesticide is the name of that chrome extension so pretty cool you can see that then whenever you just um refresh a page it just goes away so next we're going to grab the heading um heading h1 so what we're going to see here font size uh two we'll say four ram sorry four ram and we'll say text align to the center and then padding of two ram perfect now for our, we'll say heading, heading P tag, and we'll say text aligned to the center as well. There we go. Now for our text background, this is pretty, be pretty cool here. I'm gonna go ahead and copy over this color here. So for our text background, we'll say text PG. So I'm gonna say background, sorry, not background color, just background. It's an RGBA, okay. And there we go. I'm going to paste that in there. And as you can see, we have that nice a light blue color in the background. And we give it a height of 30 pixels. Max width of, we'll say 650 pixels. And we're say margin auto to put that in the middle. We want to position this as absolute because we're going to actually shift up our text in there. That's inside that P tag in the span. So I want to say, um, say left zero right zero whoops what is that Let's see how that looks in there okay perfect so we actually probably just get rid of that yep leave that in there so um looking good right there but how do we shift the text upwards so it kind of gives that offset in there so let's go ahead and do that so we're going to do that with our on our p tag so we'll say Text, just like that, and we'll say, let's see, uh, 
font size. We'll bump that up a bit. 1.4 rem. There it goes. Perfect. And then we'll say margin top. And I think I said negative 0.6. There you go. So that just shifts it up a bit. And that looks pretty good right there. Perfect. Now, next, um, next, let's just do our, our slider component. And then we'll come back here and actually add in painter. We'll say, uh, say padding, five RAM on the top and bottom, general left and right. So, okay, let's add in our actual component here. So let's go into the find here. And instead of me just copying over, I'm going to show you how you can copy it over from their site here. So basically what we're going to do is let's just copy this part right here. Okay, so we'll copy that in here and go ahead and paste it inside here. Then we need to close this off swiper just like that. You know, and then inside here, we can actually have just swiper slides and each slide is going to be swiper slide. each slide is going to be something that we can uh, navigate through that we can kind of uh, loop through here so a few things that we're going to add in right here so i'm going to change the space between for me i'm going to change that to 10 and then the viewable slides i'm going to set to five okay and then we're going to add in Navig navigation and that'll just automatically be set to true we don't have to add anything to that right there um, we do need to bring in some modules and the modules we're going to bring in put in curly brackets navigation is one um, if you want to bring in the pagination i'll go ahead and bring that in if you want to play with it as well as the scroll bar and this how and those are um those are actually uh, ones, by the way, just so you know, A11Y, there we go. And what we want to do is actually add in some breakpoints in here. So I'm just going to copy all of these over. And we'll do that by saying breakpoints, just like that. And we're going to have double curly brackets there. I'm just going to paste those in there, give it a save. Now it looks like we're getting an error nav. I think it's just misspelled. Okay, perfect. There we go. All right. So um, let's see here next. So we have our, our swiper slide here. And what we're going to do is actually have a bunch of cards. And this is we're going to be actually passing through, um, passing down properties. So we're going to have our card component there. So what you need to do is go ahead and import card here at the top if you haven't done so already. So it may have auto imported for me. So import card from card. Okay. Now, um, Inside our card, what we're gonna do here is let's go ahead and we can get rid of that. And in here, we're gonna have a class name. And this is gonna be styles.card. And then in here, we're just gonna have an image and then also a, a P tag. So image, and this is gonna, we can say um, image, just like that. And we're gonna be passing these down, you guys. We'll come back, take care of those. So let's go into here. So for our card, I'm going to go ahead and just copy over because this is where we're going to use the um, over here. This is the image string that I'm grabbing over from Unsplash. So just to give you guys an example, we're going to say image. And this is the property that we're passing through. OK, let's wrap that. So image and the passing through this string here. And then also we want to pass through make here. And this make is going to be. Uh, we'll see how do you just like that. So we're passing these down. Now we have to go into our card component and we'll just accept these here. And we can just go ahead and destructure these by saying image and make. Therefore, we don't have to say, you know, props dot, you know, this or props dot that. So, <laughs> excuse me. You now see we're pulling in our image that we're passing through. And also down here, you can see, you can kind of barely see it at the bottom. That is the make down there as well. So let's go ahead and actually, um, I'm gonna go ahead and pass through the rest of these things here. So I'm just gonna copy my other ones here and what I'm bringing over that way we don't have to type them all out. But basically all I'm pasting here is a bunch of these right here, okay? And I'm mapping, we're gonna have all of our, our slides and cards there. So this should be how it looks. Uh, what we need to do next is actually go into our um, container here and I, or our, our module.css file, we're gonna style everything out. So let's go ahead and do that right now with our styles. And we're gonna start with our 
card styles.card okay so what we can say here is we'll say card and what i want to give this a margin of 0.5 rim okay and then we're going to have a border radius of 10 pixels per card okay and i'm going to go ahead and copy over our box shadow there we go perfect now for our image here okay for our image is next i'm going to say card image just like that so width is going to be 100 percent and when the border top left radius okay 10 pixels let's copy that down and we're going to change this to the right okay and then we want a height of say 200 pixels it's looking better already perfect now it's kind of aspect ratio is kind of skewed so we're going to say object fit cover and that's going to maintain our uh, aspect ratio so let's have a look they are perfect now we should have a slider container of five rim on the top and bottom um our slider container ah oh, here we go container and that should give us okay perfect so that's looking good so far look at that you guys that's how easy that's how easy it is to use this component look at that it already looks beautiful perfect that is what it, that's what we want right there you guys looking awesome right there so let's go ahead and i'm going to open this thing up full screen just to see how it looks perfect that looks nice that looks nice and just let's check on smaller devices to make sure it is responsive drop this down a bit perfect you guys that looks awesome let's see if we need to add in um maybe just a few more styles in here um so the image um let's go ahead and add in some media queries um you know i think that might be good let's yeah, it looks good right there. Okay, perfect. So on our next, for our next component here, what I want to jump to, drop that back down. What I want to jump to next on our component is going to be this image here. This driver component is what we're going to call it with this nice image and then some text below that. So let's go ahead and jump onto that next. Drop these down. Let's open up our menu here. So our next folder here is right here. I'm just going to call this driver because we're going to call our component driver as well, driver.jsx. And then we're going to have our driver.module.css. Perfect. And just again to show you guys, whenever we select an element here, whenever we select our element, like this, for, for example, our heading inside of our H1 or these divs, you can see if we scroll up, our text background just adds that extra string on there so we don't have any overlapping CSS messing up our styling. So Really, really powerful stuff, you guys. By the way, hit the like button if you feel like you're getting some value out of that. I'd appreciate that. So what we need to do, let's go ahead and get our RAFCE. And this is for our this is for our driver component there. So what we want to do with our driver component, um, we're gonna go ahead and import our um our modules here. So let's import styles from and we're going to driver.module.css. Perfect. And so we already have the image that we're going to use that we pulled in over um, earlier. And if you haven't done that already, like I said, I'm going to post a link to this to my GitHub so you can go ahead and import this image. But this is the image right here that we're going to be using. So let's go ahead and import this. Um, we call it whatever you want up here, what I call it. Drive. So we'll say drive. You can't say drive verbs. You can't name, sing, name things the same as your uh, component React will throw some errors. So just something to note there. So, um, and we're going up here to our images and then drive gene. Perfect. Okay. So in here, what we're going to have here, let's give the styling here on the outside first. So give this a class name and send me styles drive, just like that. Now inside this div, it's going to be kind of like a container here. This is going to be on the left side. So class name. See styles left. This is going to be the left side where our image is. And we're going to be using the grid system here. So we'll say drive. Now our image should show up. Oh, we need to here, let's import it into our app.js. So it's really annoying me how nothing is auto importing. It's all right. So drive, and this is going to be in the drive folder. F component, just like that. Okay. So um, getting some errors, can't resolve. Drive, drive, driver, sorry. 
There we go. Right, so drive is not. And this is on 13. Let's see my. In the app. Forgot to switch that over as well. Okay, so now we have our image. It's super massive. We're going to go ahead and add some styles to that in a moment. So let's do this. Um, so close that. So that's looking good. So like I said, we're going to be using the grid system, and we're going to set that to this drive component on the outside. We're just going to have two different columns. So let's do our other column now, and we'll give this a class name. Class name of styles dot, we'll say. Right, or actually, I don't even think we need to style this side. So, we, hey, we can just leave that blank. But in here, let's go ahead and give this H2. And I'm going to give this, see, find your perfect bar. Then I'm going to give this a span here, a span, span to try, be by, just like that. And then after that, let's have a P tag. And I'm just going to copy this over, paste this over my P tag. So, you can use any text you want. Make sure your wheels, your future wheels work well with your lifestyle before, um, by taking your time in the driver's seat. So that looks good there. And let's just add our button in here. A button and we'll say browse. So save that, gets it nice and formatted. Um, and there's all our text on there. So it looks good. So let's go ahead and we're gonna hit drive here for get our CSS here. And we'll go ahead and get this thing styled up pretty nice. So driver, just to make sure. Keep this consistent here. So for the driver here, what we want, max width, we're gonna be using the same 10, 1040 pixels, okay? And we want the margin to be auto. And then we're gonna be using display grid here. So I'm gonna display this. As grid and we're gonna do grid template columns and we have two columns so you can just say repeat two and one fraction here we go and then we'll just give this a gap of two rem and that should be all we need let's just go ahead and give a padding of one rem so nothing touches the edges so let's go ahead and hit this image next so driver img and we'll say max width of i'm gonna say five pixels shrink it down a little bit perfect there we go now on this right side so driver h2 if it looks kind of funky right now don't worry um make sure i put that in h2 don't worry we're gonna come back and add some media queries in here so it all displays nicely and stacks on one another. so next after this driver h2 let's see padding padding top and we'll say um 30 percent just kind of bump it down a little bit there we go perfect now we have the driver span, and I'm going to add a color in here. Color, and that color is 593 CF. Add a little color there. Oh, perfect. Now, next, let's get our C targeting our text here. Uh, font size, we'll say one. I'm just drop it down just a little bit. Uh, color, we're going to change that black there. Padding is going to be 1.5 rim on the top and bottom, zero on the left and right. Now for our button, let's go ahead and driver button just like that. And I'm just going to copy this over just to save a little bit of time. What we're having, we're setting the same color, that background color there. Then the color's white. We're adding a little bit of font weight to bolden it up and then lowering the font size and just adding some uh, padding to the button. there. Take away the, uh, take away the, uh, the border there. So let's do the same thing where we can actually add a little hover effect here. And this is where I was talking, we could add this in our global styles for all our buttons or have a button component for the button styles. But since this is a, a small application, I just wasn't really too worried about that. So let's have a hover selector here. Then I'm just gonna paste in this new color here with a, a, a nice um, transition of the background color. So whenever we hover over this, you can see the color changes quite nice. So. That's looking good. So let's go ahead and add our uh, media queries here. Let's have a look at what our current pixels are. So we're at 890. And actually, I'm going to add this at a 920 breakpoint right here. So this is going to be our first breakpoint. So what it's going to do is just going to stack this grid. We're going to change it from two columns to one column. So let's go ahead and add that in. So we'll have at media screen and we'll say max width of 920 pixels. And what we're gonna do is just take that driver and we'll just change the, um, 
grid template columns to one fraction. So um, there you go. Stacks everything. Looks nice. Now we need to add some media, some other styling there because that kind of looks a little bit funky like that. So let's target that image and we'll say, now we'll say max width, um, we'll just say 80%. And then we'll have margin auto, kind of stick it in the middle there. Add a few things here. So that's looking. I don't see how it looks on mobile devices. Okay, so that looks okay. And then let's do let's do a driver. And then this left side, we'll say display flex and justify content. This will put everything in the center there. So we can just get rid of this part right there. So I think that looks good there on the left. So let's change this top here on, on the H2. I think it was at like 30%. We're going to say padding top. I will change that back to 10%. It's going to just bump it up a little. There we go. Perfect. Okay. I'm going to change this back down. To, let's just change that down to 70. There we go. Perfect. Okay. So next, uh, let's add another media query here. Um, and I'm, or you know what? I think that might be good. Um, yeah, that's good there. Hey, let's move on to the next section here in the next section if we open that up everything's looking nice get rid of that so for this next section we're going to add this right here this little luxury section with a nice little grid layout with four different columns there so let's tackle that next and let's see let's close this down so for this next side here Let's create another folder here. Oh, not the images. We're going to put this inside of our components folder. And this actually, we call it whatever we want. I'm going to call it uh, luxury. And that's going to be kind of like just the um, the name of our component here. It's going to be called luxury. And then we'll create our luxury uh, module at CSS. So let's have a luxury folder there. There we go. And we'll have a inside here, luxury.jsx. There we go. And let's also do our luxury.module.css okay so our afce is just going to get our functional component we can close that down and let's go ahead and import our styling here so import um styles from we'll say say slash luxury css there we go okay now inside here it's pretty good we're using uh like I said, four different cards. We're not going to be uh, mapping through different components. It's only four cards, and we just learned how to do that in the uh, the component up here. So it's not that big of a deal to, to to me in this in this video. So what we're going to do here, we'll add a class name, and this is just going to be styles luxury, just like that. And then that's just going to be we're going to have a top div here, and this is going to be the heading. And this is a good example why we would like to use our module CSS because you already have us. Um, a, a component with a class name of heading, and that's where we would run into issues. So, and then in here, what we're gonna have is a uh, have H1, or let's give it another H2, and with um, luxury selection, just like that. And then we'll have this uh, tag. What's this down here? We're gonna have a, um, kind of like that same thing we did up here. We're gonna have a div. And this is how we, we're adding in our, our class right there. So with our, with our background, that little blue background behind the text. So class name, and we'll just say style, style text, EG, just like that. And then we'll have a e tag. And inside here, we'll have a span. Remember, I need to copy that inside of the span, just like so. Go ahead and save, and it gets it nice and formatted for us. So next we're gonna have just below our heading here. Okay, so right in here, we're gonna have another div. And inside here, this div, this is gonna be our kind of like our container for our card. So let's give it a class name. And I'll just say styles.container go. And inside here, we'll have a div. And this div is gonna have a class name of styles.card. And inside of our card, we're gonna have an image source, okay? And I'm gonna go ahead and copy, copy this over here. And again, these are just the, um, the 
image address, the copy image address, is that getting from Unsplash or Pexels? I kind of went back and forth on both of these. So um, if you're wondering why, yeah, some say Pexels are from, some are from Unsplash. So it kind of depends where I, where I wanted to get them. So this next side, we're going to have another div here with a class name, and this is going to be styles and content. And this is going to be the, the little section right in here with a little, with a little uh, make. So inside here, we'll have an H3. And for this first one, I believe it's a Rolls Royce, just like that. So let's have a look down here. Oh, we got to import it. So let's go into our app.js and we'll import the luxury, just like that. Of course, nothing is auto importing and that's quite annoying. So I'm gonna have to have a look at that. We'll have luxury and this is inside the luxury folder. This is why I put everything in folders, you guys. It's just a lot easier and a lot, a lot, a lot nicer and a lot more. Um, it's a lot, uh, looks a lot, uh, laid out a lot better. So everything looks good there. So let's have a look. Ported correctly. Let me see it down here. Perfect. We just need to add some styles in there. And uh, let's go ahead and save. Now, before I, um, for our card here, what I'm going to do is actually just copy down some more, the rest of our, I'm going to copy down the rest of our cards here because I don't want to uh, type all of them out. So all I'm copying down is the styles or sorry, all I'm copying down is this styles.card. So this entire little section right there. So now we can see we have the Rolls Royce and down here we have the Maserati, a Range Rover and Porsche, but we're going to have all these notice all the images are all different sizes, but we're going to go into our modules.css and style everything. So everything looks beautiful. So let's start here at the top with our luxury here. And inside here, we're gonna have our max, max width, and we're doing 1040 pixels, margin auto, and we'll say padding, uh, say five rim, top and bottom, one rim on the left and right, there we go. Now next, we have our container in here. So container, we're gonna display as grid, okay? And we're having grid template columns. I believe we set that to, Repeat uh, four, one fraction there, I think. We'll have a look in it. So in here, let's have a look. Container. Oh, everything's just, all the images, we just need to style the images real quick too. So we'll get to that in just a moment. So let's get to the heading and I'm gonna give this a Underneath the grid template the columns, let's give it a gap of one rim there. Then also padding, we'll say four rim, top and bottom, one rim just to here on the left. We can come back and change that if we need to. So for H2, let's give font size. Font size, we'll say four rim, just like that, perfect. And then we'll say text, text align, center. And we'll say padding, rim. Then for our heading, in our p tag we'll say text along center and let's scroll up so we can actually see this you see all our images are kind of sliding out there <laughs> that's all right though so everything is looking good there now let's add our little text background now i'm just going to copy this over because we actually did this already so text pg and if you want to just copy that over this is from our first component here and our find component there so everything is displaying nice and that's how we need it there so perfect now, next, let's grab the let's see text G on our P tag, and we'll just change the font size. Um, the font, uh, let's say margin top. Margin top, negative, it's red. Yep, there it goes, pops up just like that, perfect. Now let's take care of our card next. So the card's what we're gonna be styling, and the card is what our uh, all of our images are inside. So Whenever we give this some styling, everything should uh, look a little bit nicer. So we'll say with 100% there, and we'll say border radius 10 pixels. And I'm copying over this box shadow. You can see a little shadow on the outside. So let's take care of our images. So I'm gonna say with 100% and we'll say border is 10 pixels um, and let's say I'm gonna leave that out. We'll, we'll just do this on the top and bottom. Let's give this a height of 250 pixels. 
kind of looks good right there perfect now um we're gonna need to add some hmm. Hard. So we might need to add, I like some margin in here, but we'll come back and fix this when we add our media query. M, luxury. That's what's going on there. Perfect. All right, so let's fix our images here. So there are, the aspect ratio is all jacked up. So for our, we'll say object fit cover, Perfect. Now let's add a little, um, the border radius on the top. So border radius top left, and that's gonna be 10. So let's copy this down. Well, this one will be the top. Left. There we go, perfect. Now let's just do the content, which is a little bottom section down here. Have a little padding in there. So we'll say card and then content, just like that. And we'll say text align with the text align to be in the center. And then we'll just give it some padding one rim we should give it some space in there ah perfect it's good looks good all right so perfect let's i'm gonna change font size one rim just to make it look a little bit better, i think there we go perfect now let's work on our media queries because we're looking at this on mobile devices it's not going to display how we want so let's go ahead and fix that and we're going to have probably we'll have two different sizes for our mobile devices so right now it's at four um, we want to shrink this down to two columns and then also down to one where we're on like an actual mobile device. So, oops, select all these. So let's go ahead and grab our um, first media query. I'm going to set to 768 pixels. So I have media screen and we'll say max width 768 pixels, just like that. And we'll say our luxury container. We'll change the grid template columns. We'll change that to, let's see, repeat to one fraction. So that's already looking better right there. And we could probably just change this font size a little bit. So we'll say heading, it's an H2, and we'll say font size, three RAM opposed to the four RAM. So looks good there. Now let's go and change this. Looks good, let's see. So whenever we hit 768 pixels, boom, where is it? 768 drops to two, then we ultimately, we want it to drop down to one. So let's do this one more time. We'll just select that and we'll just say at media screen, but change this to 100 pixels. Then anything below 500 pixels, we'll set the luxury container, spell this container, to see grid template columns, and we'll just say one function. So it should now stack on each other. And that looks good right there. Perfect, you guys, everything's looking nice. Now I know my image, my video down here, my, my face is covering some. Now let's go ahead and add in the footer. So let's go in here. And for our footer, create our next little file here. Footer file, then inside here we'll have a footer. Oh, gotta be capitalized there, footer.jsx. Oh, JS. JS is fine too. It works all the same. Um, in fact, I'll go ahead and leave it just to show you guys. So footer dot uh, module dot CSS. Go. And so JSX is just a little bit, it's like a React file. Um, it was, it re recognizes it as a React file. So sometimes the extensions and the shortcuts work a little bit better. But since the shortcuts are not working at all, what's it even matter, right? So for our footer, it's going to be very, very basic. Um, as you can see over here, I know my, my image is down here covering it, but we're just gonna have a, our logo over there with a button on the bottom right. So let's go ahead and take care of that. So let's do our style sheet. So we'll import styles from footer.module CSS, there we go. And we're also gonna import, so let's import logo again from images. And I think this is logo arc i name it logo underscore dark logo underscore dark dot png oh and we have our styles so let's go ahead and this class name we'll say styles dot footer and inside our footer we're going to have a container so this is why we use our um 
it, th this would be the shortcut uh, or the advantage of using the .jsx. So if you're wondering why you're not able to type div like that and have it uh, auto generate, you can come down here to, the, oh, you can't see it. So at the bottom of your code editor, you notice it says JavaScript and that's the lang set select language mode. So if you click that, you notice this pop-up up here. What you can do is just type in React, go ahead and hit enter and that'll change it. And basically that, you can see it changes it to like the React format. And that's why I add the .jsx in there. So in case you're wondering, just a little tip for you guys. So let's go ahead and add this class name. And this one's just gonna be styles.painter, there we go. And then we'll just have two things in here, our image, which is gonna be our logo, slash in there. And let's go ahead and add this in here while we're at it. I'd like to see whatever we're, whatever we're working on. Twitter. Twitter, Twitter, just like that. And we can go ahead and close this, all these others here. Okay. And we're gonna have our button over here that says share a make that count. Go. So for our styles, I know, let's see here. I'm gonna keep I'm gonna keep uh this on a mobile device so you can actually see it in there. So let's go ahead and add for our footer here, say width hundred percent. And then height, we'll say 80, 80 pixels and background color. This background color, I'm gonna say one, two, one, two, four. It's gonna be like a black, there we go. Kind of lighter black. And then for our container, okay. For container, we're gonna do the max width of 1040 pixels. Auto, um, say here, height 100%. So we can actually use our flex in here, padding one rim. We'll display flex and then justify content space between and then align items center. So that should space everything out correctly. There you go. Now let's just do our button here. So we have our button name, footer button, there we go. So a background color, and it's the same thing we've been using. Let's see, 593CFB, there we go. A nice color there. Let's style up our button color. Maybe I should have added an extra little uh, button component then add everything styled. So that's all right though. So we'll font weight 600, and then we'll say font size, one rim, and then padding 12 pixels. One of the benefits of React, you know, reusable components, so. Maybe I should have just taken advantage of that. So boom, there we go, border none, perfect. Now let's add in our hover again, once more. We have that nice color change. We'll say footer, um, footer button hover selector. Then all I did added in was the new background color and this nice little transition there. So let's have a look here. So everything is looking nice. We uh, we can't see it because we're, not, we're on a mobile device here, but scroll up. Everything looks good. So let's check this down and see what we have done. Everything is looking good, you guys. All right, let's scroll down, make sure everything works properly. We have a nice hover effect. Go, everything looks good. I'm not sure, yeah, you can see that there, nice hover effect on the button at the bottom. Now let's shrink this down to a mobile device, make sure, just to double check here, everything zoomed in. Our device is working properly, perfect. All right, you guys. I hope you liked the video. Smash the like button if you feel like you got some value out of this. Thank you for watching and subscribe to the channel. I'll see you on the next one.